Well, hi there, and welcome to another episode of Hey, What's Next? Recently, I decided to take the plunge and attempt to upgrade my Mac Pro 2013 to the latest Mac OS update called Sequoia. To accomplish this upgrade, I need to install OpenCore Legacy Patcher. If you're not aware, OpenCore Legacy Patcher is a tool that allows older Mac hardware to run more current versions of the Mac operating system. Well, just to be clear, I already have this tool installed on the Mac Pro, and it's currently running Mac OS 13, which runs great. As this show explores computers, I thought I'd record my experience and share the highlights with the update. In addition, I'll perform a few benchmarks before and after the upgrade to see what changes might occur. So, without further ado, Let's upgrade this Mac to the latest operating system from Apple called Sequoia. This is what's next. Today, we are going to take my Mac Pro 2013 using Open Core Legacy Patcher. We're going to the latest operating system. But before we do that, what I wanted to do is just show some general benchmarks. I want to see if there's any degradation or improvements in the speed of the Mac Pro after upgrading from 13.7 to 15.01. So let's go ahead and run Geekbench 6. Okay. So after several minutes, what was it, almost eight minutes, we get 738 single core, 4,935 multi. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm going to run the metal test now. So we have a score of 26,558. Go. All right, here we have a one minute Final Cut Pro project. We're just gonna do an export and see if there's any difference there. I have 48.65 seconds for a one minute clip. All right, you might notice there was a jump in time over here. Uh, that's because I wasn't recording any of this stuff, right? So I'm going back in time. We're gonna do speedometer 3.0 testing and I am recording this time. So let's go ahead and start this test. This is really to figure out the single core performance in a web browser. We're not expecting high scores because the single core score on a Mac Pro 2013 isn't very high. So let's start this and we'll come back in about a minute. And our final score is 8.25 plus or minus 0.39. Uh, the prior test I had an 8.3. That was the part I didn't record. So that's why we're redoing this. That's consistent with what I was getting last night prior to recording this video. Let's try some OpenGL testing. Right now, 60 frames a second with 500 fish. I'm at webglsamples.org. I know by going to 5,000, I can still maintain 60 frames a second. If we go to 10,000, we hover around 36, 34 to 37. This is just a comparison. We're gonna see what happens when we upgrade to 15.01. So let's jump into Open Core Legacy Patcher. I'm not going to go through the tutorial on installing OpenCore Legacy Patcher. The Mac Pro has been using this for the last 10 or 12 videos that I've created. We know that it works. So after you've installed OpenCore Legacy Patcher, you would go to create Mac OS installer, and then you could go to download the Mac OS installer, which I've already done Sequoia. So we already have that. So I'm gonna go return back to the menu and before we get any further, I'm going to go and plug this uh, Van Suni. Uh, it's an SSD drive. It's not very fast. You get about 130 megabytes per second on this. We're gonna click Create, Use Existing. It now sees the Sequoia. It, there is the 64 gigabyte drive, and that's what we're gonna use. It's gonna say, hey, you're gonna lose your data on here. That's fine. And now it's going to overwrite that drive 
and start the process. All right, we're coming up to the end of OpenCore Legacy Patcher, creating the installer on our drive. One advantage of this drive, again, may not be the fastest in regards to, let's say, other SSD speeds, but compared to a standard USB thumb drive, it's a heck of a lot faster. So highly recommend at least these cheap SSDs, as long as you're getting the appropriate amount of storage, this one works fine. Now it's gonna validate the integrity of the installer to make certain that everything is exactly the way it should be. So that's good. We're gonna come back here in a few moments after this is done. All right, it successfully created the macOS installer and it's asking if we would like to continue and install OpenCore to this disk. I'm going to say yes. So it's going to add the specific components to the Mac that you're trying to upgrade. Say install the disk. We identify the disk, which in this case is this external. It's going to add the EFI partition and upgrade that. You can even see it on the desktop, shows up for a moment. And then it says that it has finished installing to the disk. You will need to reboot and hold down the option key. So that's this key right here and then select open core boot EFI option. Would you like to reboot? I'm going to say yes. Restart. And then I'll hold down the option key after I hear the bong from the Mac Pro. Holding down the option key. The EFI boot, this is the internal SSD. That is the one that is on the external drive. That is the one I'm going to select. I'm just using the arrow keys and then pressing enter. I want to install Mac OS Sequoia. And in this case, I am not wiping this drive. This is an upgrade. That is all I'm doing with this drive. Some videos are showing a complete nuke and pave is what I call it, where you just erase the whole drive and you do a clean install of the Mac OS. I'm not doing that because I want to see how well the upgrade works. So let's let it go through its process here. We'll come back in a moment. Here we have our menu options. We can restore from Time Machine, install. That's exactly what we're going to do. Safari and Disk Utility. Again, if you were going to do the Nuke and Pave, you could do the Disk Utility, erase the drive that's in your Mac, and then do your install. Again, I'm doing an upgrade. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go and select Install Mac OS Sequoia continue there's our splash screen here welcome screen press continue this time it takes a moment I've noticed that with uh, some of these newer operating systems patience is a virtue maybe did I not click it let's try that again there it goes so you notice that it did take some time, so be patient. Don't be like me and try to rush through this. I already clicked agreed, so I'm gonna agree to it. This is the drive, and it says that Sequoia will be installed on the Macintosh hard drive within the Mac Pro, and we're gonna go click continue. And this is gonna go through several reboots. So I'll show the number of reboots as we go through this, and then we'll hopefully start testing again with Mac OS Sequoia. Okay, we've already gone through our first reboot. Well, for some reason, I didn't quite catch the first reboot. Uh, we have 28 minutes remaining. Uh, again, I'm not trying to record this entire process, but I really do want to say what the steps are, and I could not get this thing to focus. So it's now focused. First reboot has taken place. We'll come back in a moment. We're at 21 minutes. It's currently 11.46. We have yet to go into the next boot. All right, 11.51, we've done our second reboot and I'm gonna let it go here. Let's see what it says. I think we are roughly around 14 minutes left. So we should get a stat here in just a moment. Still waiting for the results on how much time do we have left with this installer? Again, you can see we are at 11.53. looks like we're doing another reboot okay this time it's actually selecting the Macintosh hard drive so let's see what happens here
definitely seems to be stuck, but I'm holding out hope. I'm gonna go ahead and pause the camera and we'll come back hopefully soon on a restart back into the Mac Pro 2013. Okay, about one minute or two minutes have gone by. We are now starting to see a little bit more progress on this bar. Fingers across, this is gonna work. I'm sure it will, because so many other YouTubers and professionals have done this, but I'm not a professional. So let's see what happens with my Mac Pro. Oh, and it says 10% completed. We're actually doing some other stuff here. Good sign, because I started to panic, but I guess we're just gonna let this run and see what happens. 99% completed. We're getting there. We have 11.58 on the clock here. We'll come back after this is done. Just missed the chime. It's selecting the Macintosh hard drive. Getting our progress bar here. It's going much faster this time. And there we go. We're in Sequoia. Obviously this clock is not matching up with this. This is actually 12.05. I'm showing 11.59 on my clock, but again, that was just to show us how long it was taking. Let me enter in my password. And again, with the first boot up, give it some time. And we're getting the beach ball. Um, clean my Mac once access. I'm gonna go ahead and let it do that. So now we got the open core legacy patcher detected that you are booting from a USB or external drive. If you would like to boot your Mac normally without a USB drive, you can install OpenCore to the internal drive. Would you like to launch OpenCore Legacy Patcher and install to disk? Why, yes, I would. You may notice too, I'm getting a little bit slowness on my mouse. We're gonna say install to disk. This time I'm selecting the internal drive. That's fine. It's mounting the partition. And we need to reboot, holding the option key and selecting the EFI options of the internal drive. We're gonna go ahead and restart. We are now restarting, holding my option key down and I want to boot up off of the drive. I don't think I pressed the option key correctly. I may need to do a reboot. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to come back here in just a moment. I was not holding down the option key soon enough. It was prior to the tone, but you'll notice now that I could go back and boot up off of the drive or I can go internally. That's what this icon is for. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, we're going to do Macintosh hard drive and now we can actually boot up off of the Mac Pro. Open core is installed. I do not need this drive anymore. So we're going to go ahead and drag that to the trash and we'll unplug it. Let's check this out. If we go up to about this Mac, we are running Sequoia 15.0.1. and let's start with Geekbench. Now, I am gonna say that because this is just a brand new install, there's a ton of stuff that's probably running in the background. So the results might be a little off, but that's okay. I can always report back to you later on that. Forgot. All right, here is Geekbench. Let's go ahead and run the CPU. 735 for single core, 4306 for multi-core. I'm gonna go ahead and save this in, and then we're gonna do the graphics benchmark. Using Metal, 26,978 is our score. Let's upload and compare. First, let's look at our CPU. We have our 13.7 and 15.01. We notice that there's very little difference in our single core. Um, our multi-core did drop a tiny bit, but probably negligible. If we go over to our compute, we have, now this was one where I accidentally ran um, OpenGL, so ignore that score, but we have 26,558 for 13.7, 26,978, so 420. So it 
increased in speed for the graphics, so that's a bonus. Let's do the Final Cut export. Coming up to the end here. I'm showing 49 seconds. It's about a second slower than it was with 13.7. Let's move on to our web test. Coming up to the end, I think the last one was 8.25, 8.25. And this score is 10.3. We're seeing a significant increase in our browser performance. Let's try the final thing, the OpenGL Aquarium. We know we were getting 60 frames a second with 5,000 and roughly at 10,000, we were somewhere between 34 and 37. So let's try 5,000. We're still getting 60 frames a second there. Do 10,000. And we are now getting 40 frames a second. We're seeing an increase in the browser performance in Sequoia compared to the prior OS 13.7. Let's go back to the studio for my final thoughts. Before I give my final thoughts, if you do decide to go down this path and upgrade your legacy Mac hardware to a more current operating system, don't forget to back it up. You can always use built in, the built-in time machine software from Apple or another third-party backup tool. While my experience with this update was successful, you always want to be safe with your data. So, what are my thoughts? Overall, the installation was easy. Prior to filming my experience, I did review the online steps from the OpenCore Legacy Patchers website, and I watched a few other YouTube videos, including those from Mr. McIntosh. Since the upgrade, I have not noticed any overall changes to the performance of my Mac, except for maybe a slightly slower boot up. As far as my applications are concerned, they all seem to run fine. Since performing the upgrade, I did rerun Geekbench a few more times. Any OS upgrade will tax a system initially as it optimizes itself to make the hardware work at its best, which is the reason for those initial lower scores. As you can see, with these additional tests, both the single core and multi-core scores are very close to the benchmarks I recorded while running macOS 13.7. Overall, I'm pleased with the upgrade. I know that at some point, Apple will no longer support Intel-based Mac systems, but it's nice to know there's a solution to keep my hardware going for a while longer. What happens next? Linux, anyone? Well, that's it for today's show. If you liked what you saw, take a moment and give me a thumbs up. To have my channel appear in your feed, please click the subscribe button and that bell notification icon. Thank you in advance. In the meantime, feel free to watch one of my other videos here or here. And until next time, I'll see you again in another episode of Hey, What's Next?